In this video, I'm going to show you the top 25 keyboard shortcuts that you might not know. The first one is the repeat tool. So I can repeat any one command I use. So say I were to duplicate this with shift D, then constrain the movement to the X axis and then hit maybe three. I can then hit shift R a few times to add even more. Also, if I were to maybe select something and hit bevel or anything and select something else and hit shift R again I can do the same bevel that I did last time now there are some catches to the selection I found that selecting all or deselecting all or the linked with L selection like this that seems to break the last operator so that it doesn't work for another repeat, but I find this tool to be super useful and have a lot of potential to speed up your workflow. Now, what if I wanted to work around this one? So I can move around, but even if I move around here, it rotates badly. So I could instead select one over there, and hit the period specifically on the numpad, and it will go around it, and it will now lock around and rotate around easily to make it easier to work with. And if I want to go back, I could just do that again. Now, since I have a lot of objects in my world, I could hit period, either the regular or the numpad version on here, on the outliner, and I can find it easily in here. And it'll just center on it. As well as the regular period is the pivot point pi menu. So I could use any of these like 3D origin, individual, origins is often easy or just go back to medium point next up number three we got the comma to go with that which gives us the orientation menu so that i can work in like normal space or local space if i say rotated this i could tab into it hit comma and work in local space so that if i g on the y-axis is going in its local y-axis instead of the global one. Number four, we can hit control space, which will maximize our working area, whichever one that we have hovered over, so that we can make a little bit more room. I like using this for like sculpting. Along with that, we got control alt Q to go into quad view. Now this one, we can change whatever view we want. And these ones stay at the top front and right. And I can hit it again to go out. Now to easily set the subdivision, I can hit control one, two, three, four, or five, and it'll just add a subdivision modifier and change the viewport value to whatever is there. Next, we got move to collection. So I could hit M to move this to a different collection or create a new collection to move it to. I can move it to collection two. And now it's moved to collection two that I just made. We also got F2, so I could hit F2 to rename this to ball. And now it's renamed to ball. Next, we have Alt, S, R, and G. And these clear the scale, rotation, and location. So let's say I move this over here. I can just hit Alt, G, and it'll go back to the center of the world. Or if I rotate this, I can also hit Alt-R and it'll go back, or Alt-S and it'll go back to normal. Another use for this is if you're using a game engine to make your scenes, and maybe you have a bunch of objects that you're working in the same Blender file, you'll need to move every object to the center so that you can have it in the correct pivot point. So I can just hit A to select all, and then I can just hit Alt-G to put it all in the same pivot point and then I can export it with file export and then I can hit undo after that so that I can go back to my working area. Next up we have the option to hold shift when moving, rotating or scaling. So if I hit G for example to move this, it moves relatively fast, but if I hold shift with it, it's going to move a lot slower, which can allow me to more precisely move it. And if I let go again, it's fast. Another option when I use this is if I hit G to move it around 
if I hold control, it'll use my snapping. So you can see that this is snapping to the vertices. Or I could change my snapping mode to increment. So if I don't move it, so if I move it without holding control, it will move without the increment. And then I can just hold control and it will move in increments of a meter. Next, we can use middle click when we uh, move, rotate, or scale to lock the axis. So if I hit G to move, I can hold middle click and then let go, and it's now specifically on the Z axis, for example. And I like this better than hitting G and Z for every time I want to move on a specific axis, because after you make a lot of movements, it kind of becomes a pain. And if I were to use just a move tool in specifically edit mode when you have vertices close to each other, I find that the move gizmo kind of gets in the way of your selections. So I kind of like using the middle click to set my axis quickly. Next we got lasso select. So if I hit control and hold my right mouse button, I can select with a lasso like that. So that's another option for your selections. And yet another option for your selections is control alt click, which will select a ring instead of specifically a loop. Like if I add a loop here, I could select a loop with alt click, or I could select a ring with control alt click, which are these ones going this way, while the loop is the ones that are connected, like this. Next up I got warp. So Let's say this was supposed to be a blade of grass. I could hit shift W and have my 3D cursor here and it will warp this around and I can curve my grass blade or whatever like that. So that's an option to warp your things quickly and easily. Next up, we have X-ray mode, which can be toggled with alt Z. So now I could select things on this side and maybe make a box selection and have it select everything instead of if I were to do it without x-ray on or without being wireframe. And if I hit box selection, you'll see that the back sides weren't selected. Next up, we've got the extrude menu, which can be hit by Alt-E. And I could maybe choose along normals or individual faces, and then I can move these out, and then I can move these and separate them. Next up, we got the hooks menu, which if I hit control H, it will give me the option to make hooks. I'll use to a new object instead of selected object or selected bone. And what this does is it gives me a hook modifier and I can just grab this object and I can move it and it will move my selected faces on this object. This is good for animating certain things like curves work well with it. Now let's say we were rendering in cycles we could hit render and if we were maybe trying to work on the shaders or something, we might want to limit how much we're rendering so we don't have to wait for it to update for a long time. I can hit control B and it will select a certain area that we will only render in cycles. Next, if we move our 3D cursors anywhere, we can hit shift C to center the 3D cursor. And now the 3D cursor is centered. And now if I want to add something, it'll be in the origin, so I can move it. Next, if we were to add a curve, move it over here. So if I were to subdivide this, and then I grab this handle, you'll see that both sides of it rotate, which keeps it smooth. Well, I could hit V and change it from that to say vector instead of automatic. And now I can move these separately and have a sharp angle there in this curve. We could also say move these around. And the next one will be to use Alt C to close this curve and have it go all the way around. And if I hit Alt C again, it'll go away. Next, if I were to go into sculpting mode, I could change the brush size with F. I could change the strength with Shift F and maybe make it really strong. And I can change the angle with Control F and this angle is important for if you're like using a texture, I'll change the angle of the texture. Next up, we got the make links menu. So let's say if I wanted to change this cube into this cube, I could 
click this, select the shift, select this, and then hit control L for make links. And I can choose the object data and you'll see that this changed into the same shape as this. Or let's say if I were to go into look dev and maybe gave this a material, its own material, um, and then maybe made it red. You'll see that these two, since they're the same object, are red. But I could say select this, shift select this, and then I can go ahead and hit control L to make links with the material. And now it has the same material as this one. And finally, we have control alt numpad zero, which moves the camera to the view. So the camera is here. So if I hit control alt numpad zero, it'll move the camera to where I was looking. And if I hit zero, it'll, we'll see in the camera and we'll see that it's a little too far zoomed in. So I can hit this and I can hit G, Z, and then hit Z again to make it the local Z. And I can just move it out and zero again. And you'll see that I zoomed out a bit. So those were 25 keyboard shortcuts that you might not have known about. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more Blender videos. Thank you.